The heavily redacted affidavit behind the raid at Mar-a-Lago has finally been released. This, as it's revealed, the National Archives was willing to let Trump send his letters with King Jong-un through FedEx. Here to comment, May Mailman, a former Trump White House attorney and Independent Women's Forum senior legal fellow. May, welcome. So from the unredacted parts, which isn't very much in the affidavit, what have you learned about probable cause for the DOJ? Yeah, so I think there's three very problematic things with this affidavit. So for me, the first um, is that it shows that this was about getting stuff and not about national security. And really, mm. national security is the only thing that I think most Americans would have bought as potentially a reason to go into the president's home. But there's just no indication that our national security was imminently or even at future at risk. Uh, second, as you were saying, I just don't see probable cause for a crime. The crimes that the FBI is charging or, or you know, thinking about here can't be committed accidentally. They can't be committed mistakenly. And the FBI knows that Trump believes that he declassified these documents and these documents are his. So even if he's mistaken about that or even if he could be mistaken about that, that's not enough to charge something under the Espionage Act, which requires the president to act willingly. And then third, and this kind of goes to Will's point from earlier, is uh, that I do have concerns about our democracy here. The mm. Constitution vests the, pres the power of the executive power in a president, not in a bureaucrat. And this is a bureaucrat's vendetta to go get stuff, not because the, the nation needs it. Joe Biden doesn't need these documents to do his job, but because he's a bureaucrat that gets his self-worth from people following his directions. Yeah, it is so interesting. I never thought that bureaucrats at the National Archives could have the power to trigger the raid of, of an elected president and in his home and with, you know, just full access of his home and his wife's bedroom and closet. Um, who knew that these bureaucrats had this kind of power? Yeah, I know. And, and the other thing, as you were saying, is another reason we know that this is really not about national security is the archivist was going to be okay with uh, <laughs> the president's lawyers FedExing documents as if FedEx is somehow safer than a Secret Service protected building overseen by a man who was responsible for our national security for four years where we were very secure. Yeah, so in the or original, you know, right after the, the raid, they made it sound like there were nuclear codes or some nuclear issue. Nothing in the affidavit, correct, that alludes to that, that we can see. No, really, really nothing that we can see, as you're right. You know, they black out several pages. But the intro of the affidavit is very interesting to me because it affirms that this was about the archivist who didn't get enough boxes back. Well, what was in the first 15 boxes that he had? Golf balls a razor, uh, a rain jacket, you know, yes, there were very old, dated, classified documents, but no indication that any of these documents were posing any risk to anybody. Yeah. As we talk about the constitutionality of this, it's really interesting to know that it is the National Archives who put trigger warnings on our founding documents, including the Constitution, because they were worried it might offend people. Um, so, again, May. Great points. Thanks for joining us today. Thanks, Rachel. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmeade. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.